Thank you once again, uh, thank you. Pro- Professor Teng Jingguan, uh, President of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, we really appreciate for, for your spending your precious time with us uh, okay. to make realize our presidential dialogue to discuss on the civil engineering and the global issues. <clears throat> I have to, I want to introduce somehow uh, mm-hmm. to Professor Teng and uh, my relationship. Uh, Professor Teng is one of the close friends in my field of civil engineering. I think our relationship is more than two decades. Mm-hmm. We have some yeah. common interest. And now, Professor Tem uh, is president of Hong Kong Polytechnic University, which I believe is one of the top ranked universities in Asia and the world for both overall and also civil engineering. Then I have chosen Professor Tem, you. Thank you. He's one of the uh, uh, person to have the dialogue on this uh, specific issue, which is civil engineering and uh, global issues. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I have prepared kind of 10 questions for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we look for the, your variable uh, answer. OK, let me start with my first question. <clears throat> Uh, what is the university policy for education of students? Is there any specific goal of the quality of the graduates, such as serving society globally? Mm-hmm. So what's your university policy for students, uh, graduate student, I mean, graduating student uh, quality? Yeah, this mm-hmm. is my question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so actually, uh, at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, we uh, place a lot of emphasis on social responsibility education. So in in the motto, the motto of the university is called, in Chinese, it's it's eight eight characters, but in English, it's uh, the the meaning of that is to learn and to apply for the benefit of uh, mankind. So basically what that says is we, are, we place a lot of emphasis on our contribution, our service uh, to the community, to the development of society. So for that reason, we are not that strong in, I mean, we don't have, for example, a philosophy department. Mm. Or we don't, I mean, our physics people are mainly studying uh, applied physics, uh, our mathematics department is actually called a applied mathematics department. So the disciplines at PolyU actually are, you know, very focused on areas which have a direct contribution to society. So this is a discipline yeah. setup. In terms of student education, we also um, put the same emphasis uh, on their service to the community. And uh, in the last 10 years or so at the PolyU, we implemented the, uh, this compulsory subject, compulsory. Every student has to do it. It's called a service learning. So service learning is for students to use their professional knowledge they have learned from the uh, university and serve communities in need. Yeah. And so the, the, they, they do it in Hong Kong locally, but they also do it overseas. Uh, the, you yeah. know, the, the most uh, distant part they went to, I think, is Uganda in Makes Africa. Sense. So even during the last uh, year or two, because of the pandemic, they couldn't go. They still did it, you know, uh, remotely, which means mm. uh, they, they uh, guided local people to um, put up in you know, the solar panels for energy generation, for example. Oh, oh, oh. So this is uh, using their technical knowledge to contribute to places which are, you know, in need of Mm. help uh, Mm. or to elevate poverty, uh, go to remote places to teach children English, for example. So there are many things we do. So this is a compulsory subject. I was Mm. just looking at a student who graduated a few years ago, who is now a student at UC Berkeley. 
uh, wanting a recommendation letter and I look at his CV when he was a student, even though he was a civil engineering student, his service learning was in optometry. Uh, mm -hmm. He learned some skills and go to check the eye sight of elderly people mm -hmm. and disseminate knowledge about eye care. So we have this compulsory component, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that they, they know they have to serve the community. Uh, I see. So it's a social. So in our mission, when we, we the aim of education is to produce students who have lots of other attributes, but in the meantime, they are socially responsible citizens. So mm -hmm. this is our, our approach. I see. I see. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, so you so we, are, we are a leader in this university is an international leader in the area of social or uh, service learning education. Okay. And okay. so we actually established a social responsibility network of universities. And uh, from Japan, I think Kyoto University was a member of that network. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All mm -hmm. right. So uh, it's a very interesting. You have such a uh, pro mm -hmm. uh, program. Yes. Uh, I, I three, never know that. It's yes. a three credit subject. So every student has to, to do it. Well, I so see. My, so my plan is. Uh, in the near future, I want to make sure that 50%, half of the students will do the service learning subject overseas, mm, not local, okay. outside yeah, outside Hong Kong, good. either in the mainland or in an in uh, international place. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's uh, let move to the second question. Mm -hmm. So now it's a, that is the first question in education. Now I come to the research. What mm -hmm. is the university policy? for the research outcomes. Is there any specific goal for the quality of the research outcomes, mm -hmm. such as contribution to the uh, society globally? Yeah. Yeah, this is a yeah, research aspect mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. education. Uh, in research, actually, because of the motto we have, so this university has always also been keen on making sure that our research gets applied somehow. You know, mm. in the society. So we have always been keen on that. But mm. in the previous decades, uh, in Hong Kong, the research culture has been much more academically driven. Yes. yes. Uh, so they do research for publication. Mm. And that was partly because, you know, Hong Kong does have very good scholarship based research. But if you want to translate your research into application, in many areas, Hong Kong is too small to have a market for it. And also okay. when you have some, sometimes when you want to produce a product, you need an industrial base. Yes. And Hong Kong doesn't have it. So mm -hmm. it becomes not, it was not so easy uh, in some areas. Of course, luckily in construction, uh, it's easier for us because Hong Kong still have a, still has a strong construction infrastructure program. Mm -hmm. So, but over the last, uh, so years back when the, we have a university research university grants committee which funds the universities and under which there is a council called the research grants council which funds research projects mm -hmm. in the old days they will only look at how many papers not how many but they normally look at uh, six or uh, four papers we have to submit four papers mm -hmm. over over a period of uh, six years work and they will assess the papers to see whether it's good papers so the latest development was the latest assessment was done in 2020. And again, everybody submitted four papers and they will rate the papers to determine whether a paper is world leading or internationally excellent. So world leading gives the mark four marks, uh, international excellent three marks. Now they will do the mark uh, calculation of the scores and eventually this will determine uh, about 20% of our budget. So it's quite significant, but in, in the latest, so they look at the quality, they don't look at the numbers much, but in the latest round, they also look at the societal impact. Mm -hmm. And that was 15%. 15%. 15%. And so um, we have had some recent discussions. So my view is that uh, this percentage should, should not be the same for all disciplines. Because for some disciplines, yes, yes, yes. contribution is much more direct. For yeah, some yeah, that's right. It's a little more Quite difficult. Yeah. yeah. But so we do have uh, increasing emphasis on application research. 
Mm-hmm. And so I think is a, in the next research assessment exercise, they will certainly, they can only increase, they cannot decrease this component. I see. But in how, addition, how, mm-hmm. how do you quantify 15%? Yeah, how do you know? How do you uh, measure? Oh, for every, uh, we call cost center. For example, civil engineering mm-hmm. is a cost center. Mm-hmm. And you submit your document to the assessment panel, yeah. and then you will you will write about they call this impact cases. So mm. your you know, for structure engineering will write about what research we did and how it got used. I see. Uh, okay. So for example, if your research used is is adopted by international design codes, that's impact. If I your see. On str- okay. uh, monitoring is used on the Chiang Mai Bridge, that's called impact. I see, so I see. They write, you write a story and the panel will read your story uh-huh. and make a judgment. So it's quite oh, very a holistic. Good. Mm. Very good. Uh-huh. And uh, later on, we will, uh, this will probably increase in the future. And uh, in fact, in, I think there was like 21 units we took part in. Mm. And in 14 of them, poly use impact was world leading, which means four out of four marks. Mm-hmm. So we, we do quite well, we do very well in this area. And uh, about 70% of our research was rated as world leading or internationally excellent. Mm. Uh, we, we had a 70%. Hong Kong U, which is uh, the top university, top most university in Hong Kong, they had a 75%. So it's not too different now. Mm. The major universities in Hong Kong are quite similar in terms of the research achievement. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I think naturally Hong Kong is a rather area-wise, uh, geographically small city. Yeah. So uh, once you have some contribution, most of the contribution beyond the uh, Hong Kong, I believe. Yeah. How, yeah. how many of them roughly it's an international contribution? Uh, I, I think uh, it depends because uh, mm. uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of them maybe is impact on the Chinese mainland. I see. And uh, like for myself, our work goes into the Chinese national code, mm. uh, but they also got accepted by ACI, UK, you know, uh, mm. European, so that, that's international also. Um, I, I think I cannot tell you the overall ratio or something, but mm. anyway, because people in Hong Kong, uh, all our professors, uh, 99%, I guess, they had some overseas experience, so they normally are quite well connected. Yes. In addition, I think in the future, um, the translation of research into application become uh, maybe easier because over the last few years, the government has been talking about, uh, the central government and the local government has been talking about uh, developing Hong Kong into an innovation and technology center. And the way to go is for Hong Kong to combine its basic research. Mm-hmm. with the industrial basis and the uh, huge market mm-hmm. in the mainland or in the data. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So roughly contribution to the mainland China and the contribution to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. What, what is, oh. which, which is bigger? Mainland? I, I think maybe mainland may be bigger. Mainland. Uh, yeah. We have okay. a lot of collaboration. Yes, yeah, I know. University okay. in Hong Kong and those in the mainland. For example, we have a we have a space program, and uh, you know the lunar mission uh, mm-hmm. of China, Chang'e three, four, and five. For each of them, the my university researched and produced uh, some key components. So mm-hmm. for the latest uh, lunar mission, Chang'e five, we made the robotic arm that that uh, you know you, the, that uh, took the uh, lunar soil, they call it regulus, mm-hmm. and the, we also put into a container we designed. So that, that, that action was the most critical part of the mission. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the machine was made by us. And then for this, our mission, the national mission to uh, Mars, mm-hmm. we contributed in two areas. One is the choice of the landing place, landing site. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, because we have a department of uh, surveying and geoinformatics. Mm-hmm. Only geoinformatics department in Hong Kong and then we have a. Um, then we also developed the surveillance camera for the landing process. So, so this, uh, you know, this uh, impact on the mainland. Um, I, I think we have because we have more direct collaboration. So that's for that's why in the future, mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, this will be more. Uh, we, for example, we have two graduates who uh, set up a company for uh, robotics systems mm. for uh, warehouse automation. Mm. So I warehouse uh, cases, you know, handling mm. of the cases using robotic yes. arm. Yes. They yes. were very successful in Shenzhen because mm. They, mm. Have access, they have access to a big market. Yes, yes. Shenzhen is very... They can manufacture... Yes, yes, they can have these robots manufactured in uh, the greater Bay Area cheaply. If they do it in Hong Kong, how many warehouses do we have? No market. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and uh, and uh, the manufacturing is very expensive. So I think we have to combine Hong Kong's research with the uh, industry and market in, in the mainland. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Then mm -hmm. I come to the third question. Yeah, my previous two questions rather did, did, uh related the overall field. Mm -hmm. But now I come to civil engineering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. since you are a professor in civil engineering, mm -hmm. may we hear from you of your opinion as a professor and the president mm -hmm. of the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic mm -hmm. University, mm -hmm. what your university uh, responsibility mm -hmm. in civil engineering globally? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at two things. I think these are two areas which are very important, emerging of emerging importance. One is uh, achieving carbon neutrality. Yes. So carbon neutral development is something very important. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong, we set the target of carbon neutrality by 2050. Mm -hmm. uh, nationally, the target is 2060. And we understand, in fact, uh, a quarter, about a quarter of carbon emissions comes from the use of construction materials, uh, yes. plus a bit of, uh, a bit of transportation, <clears throat> stuff like that. So if we can use more durable materials and uh, higher strength materials, we have the ability to maybe for example, half the uh, carbon emission per mm -hmm. person per year. And this is an area I think it's very important from many different per perspectives and civil engineering mm -hmm. people can make a lot of contributions. You yes. know, at this moment, when people talk about Carbon neutrality is always talk yes. about solar energy, uh, wind energy, uh, things like that, and uh, energy efficiency of the operation, you know, your uh, air conditioning systems. But for the whole society, the production of construction materials, and so construction is a, is a quarter of the um, total carbon emissions. Uh, advanced manufacturing is a quarter, then um, building operation, that is also a quarter, and another quarter is everything else. So we, we, are, we are actually a major you know, com uh, component of the carbon emission. Yes, I believe so, yes. Yeah, but I think uh, civil and structural engineers have not been so outspoken on the importance of this. So this is mm -hmm. one. Area. And uh, therefore, we actually, at our university, we have a, we have a program, a master program called uh, Sustainable Urban Development. Mm -hmm. We have a research institute on sustainable urban development. We have a research uh, institute on smart energy, another on smart cities, another center on uh, uh, carbon neutral uh, resources engineering, which means recycling. So we have quite a lot of these research units, which are centrally funded by the university. Uh, a research uh, institute will fund them uh, fifteen million dollars Hong Kong dollars per year, which is yeah. I guess two million US dollars for research, you know, for research activity. So it's quite a good amount of money. Uh, so carbon neutrality is a very major thing, and um, also for the PolyU campus, we have we are working on uh, setting a target, which we will probably be, we're looking at like 2045, you know, a few years earlier than the the, 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 the society to reach carbon neutrality, and uh, so we are working on how to do it. And mm. This is one. The other area I think is uh, innovation and you know um, uh, AI and data science. I see. So from um, this year, this year, you know, summer, after summer, when students come in, every student at PolyU, regardless of your program, will have to do a compulsory subject in AI and data science. Ooh, yeah. I see. It's okay, so then, then uh, the, uh, if they like it, they can do six subjects of eight, three hours, six subjects. So it's 18 uh, grants, you do a minor in AI and data science. Uh, Furthermore, they can do what I call a secondary major in AI and data science. So what you do is like if we are doing in our system, if you do civil engineering, now you say, oh, 
I want to focus on structural engineering. You know, I study structures and geotechnical engineering, but I will uh, vacate some space for a second element here in AI and data science. Mm -hmm. And actually 25 of our programs allow you to do a secondary major. This mm. include, uh, let me see, include, uh, for example, um, linguistics and translation. Mm. So uh -huh. a person who does linguistic and translation can do this because so they can do AI for translation. Mm. 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 You, you have a student doing design, they can also mm. do that. Yes. So in our area, we have, uh, you know, civil engineering with AI and data science also focusing on mobility, uh, transportation. We have a building engineering management and management. That program is more to do with construction sites. And they, are all, they will also allow you to do AI and data science because the BIM is already a data-driven process. Yes, yes. So AI and data science is one major thing. And the other one is back to the issue of knowledge transfer uh, and the yeah. startup companies. So we allow students to do a secondary major in the same way, uh, in what we call innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm. Here, every student, when they come in, they will also have to do a compulsory subject on mm. innovation and entrepreneurship. I see. This every is student. A, it's, only, uh, it's only one credit subject. AI mm. and data science is a two credit subject. They have to do mm. this compulsory subject. So these are the two areas we want to focus on in education and research. Yeah, this yeah. is every student, not only civil, but for university. Yeah, all okay. university students. Okay, okay. And in civil engineering, of course, our research, in my view, you know, it's one is carbon neutrality mm. in research, one is uh, the use of AI and data science. Mm. And if you look at a finer division, the use of new materials, these are, in mm. my view, right. in, uh, related to civil and structural engineering, these mm. are new, new directions.